Have you noticed there haven't been as many rom-coms in the last few years? Is the rom-com dead? We took a look at 79 romantic comedies dating back to 1931. These movies have not changed in nearly 90 years. Maybe that has something to do with their tanking box office numbers. But fret not, lovers, we may end up happily ever after, after all. But first, some numbers. Spoiler alert, in 87% of the romantic comedies we watched, the couple clearly and unequivocally ends up together. We found a nearly 50-50 split, 39 to 38 in female versus male leads, but only one film featured a same-sex couple. Imagine me and you with Lena Headey and Piper Parabo. This is probably a good time to mention the list of movies. We sourced over a hundred movies from multiple top rom-com lists and pared down that list to 79 films using pretty strict filters, namely the most iconic of rom-com tropes. It had to have romantic leads who didn't know one another very well before the start of the movie, a serendipitous situation in which they meet, and a plot revolving around the question, will it work out? This list may seem homogenous. Don't worry, we're going to talk more about that later. In 53% of the movies we saw, upon meeting, the female lead is wearing a dress or a skirt, and in 37%, the dude is wearing a tie. And oh, the most common spot for a leading couple to meet is a bar or restaurant, with a combined total of 14 instances, though hotels, apartments, elevators, and airports are popular. There were also two benches, two laundromats, and one furniture store. The most common professions we saw were in the media or arts, with writing-related professions represented most strongly. Greeting cards, wedding announcements, novelist, publisher, journalist, etc. Not sure if this is some subtle comment about the love lives of artists, or just screenwriters writing what they know best. Don't worry, you'll find someone. 21 female leads were what we would call adorkable, with a few arguable cases like Holly Go Lightly in Breakfast at Tiffany's, Sarah in Serendipity, and Amanda from The Holiday. There were only two adorkable dudes, though. Michael Sarah in Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist, and Jay Baruchel in She's Out of My League. Several actors starred in multiple movies in this list, with Jennifer Lopez starring as the female lead most often, with four titles, and come on, we all know who the most popular male lead is. Do I even need to say it? Actually, it was a tie between Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Grant, with three. 23 films featured a love triangle, and 10 a love quadrangle, where at some point romantic leads are simultaneously in relationships with other people. 31% of relationships began with some form of deception. For example, Malone is hired to spy on Lorelai and Dorothy. Lucy pretends to be Peter's fiancé when she meets Jack. And in one of the 21st century's greatest film premises, Matt the web developer doesn't tell Erica the cyber nanny that there's a bunch of money riding on the fact he won't have sex during Lent. Hello. And speaking of how things get started, let's talk a little bit more about the history of the romantic comedy. Were we destined to be together? I'm not so sure. It might be Splitsville. Looking back over the history of the romantic comedy, it's surprising how little has changed. From Gary Cooper and Audrey Hepburn to Ryan Reynolds and Sandra Bullock, there may be fewer socialites and more dot-com entrepreneurs, but dramatic tensions and narrative arcs have remained remarkably consistent. A boy meets a girl, often by chance, more on that later, and though epically mismatched, a romance ensues. Before long, one partner loses confidence and calls it off, only to soon realize they are destined to be together. They race towards one another, meeting on a starlit bridge, in a light rain, or snowfall, or the stands at Wimbledon, and they live happily ever after. Various types of epic mismatch, age differences, cultural differences, lifestyles, commitment issues, traditional romantic hurdles have informed this genre since its inception, long before film. However, while class and temperament are common factors in the dramatic action, race, sexual orientation, and ability almost never are. In 93% of the qualifying films we watched, romance was between a straight white dude and a straight white lady. This might say more about Hollywood than rom-coms, but the genre has remained, generally speaking, remarkably uniform. What innovation we may attribute to the rom-com is probably related to the device which gets the romantic leads face to face. The situation where two people find each other both by chance and irresistible. We are talking about the meet cute. You're probably familiar with the meet cute through cultural osmosis or context clues. Two people meet in a way that's cute, but we're going to get more specific. In romantic comedies, the meet-cute has a particular form and function. 
A meet cute is the happenstance meeting that, while often cute, more importantly brings two unlikely people together. This is significant because logic and causality are not cute, but chance is. As is seeing two people that you know are gonna smooch at the end of the movie deal with the initially very awkward situation that has brought them together. She beats his high score, he grabs the gloves she's after, he picks her drunk date up off the floor of the club and doesn't fit in a car. It's cute. This is where the drama that eventually drives the plot originates. Two people seem perfect for one another because of how cute they meet, but soon their differences become clear. There's trouble in paradise. And three quarters of the way through the movie, someone bolts. And up till now, this has all been hashtag relatable. You randomly meet someone neat, but after a while it just doesn't work out. The end. Back to single player Mario Kart. But in a turn that may feel foolish, unlikely, or downright impossible, especially if you're watching a rom-com after a nasty breakup yourself, 8.7 times out of 10 in these films there is some grand gesture, some sudden realization, some perfect banter, or friends who talk some sense, and we end with the couple reunited. In over a third of rom-coms, the final shot of the film is a dramatic kiss. The romantic comedy plays familiar romantic conflict, the kind we all deal with for laughs. And though there's strife, these films almost always end in elation. Rom-coms depict a universe where, against all odds, love simply happens to people. Romantic comedies are hopeful. Or, I guess if you want to be cynical, they're naive. They depict a path to a meaningful relationship based largely on serendipity, not causality. You can be doing a thing that people do every day, going to work, hanging out in a bar, waiting in the airport, and love will find you. You may suffer some awkwardness, and there may be conflict, but you know it'll work out because there is something in the manner of your introduction that suggests it must, it cannot not. The universe has deemed your togetherness so. Compare this to dramas or straight-up romance films, which often deal directly with the hard choices, difficult work, and paradoxically the extremely non-romantic circumstances one is likely to encounter in an actual relationship. Maybe that's why rom-coms are so often stereotypically paired with pints of ice cream. They're satisfying, comforting. They say, hey, dreams do come true. It could happen to you. Though, to be fair, in recent years, the genre's box office expectations have tanked. According to the numbers, rom-coms had a 90 million per year ticket sales average from 2000 to 2008, but a 42.8 million ticket sales average from 2009 to 2016. They went from comprising over 7% of total movie ticket sales in the mid-2000s to less than 1% in 2015. Are we no longer satisfied by simple, cheesy romance? Or did the romantic comedy capture our hearts only to skip town? According to Vulture, it didn't leave us, it just needed a break. From the cinema, the rom-com has simply moved to television. Master of None, Insecure, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, The Mindy Project, and Jane the Virgin are the rom-com standard bearers in the golden age of TV. And arguably, television is a better format for the rom-com. It is seemingly resistant to Hollywood's homogenous casting norms. It can spend time with couples and tease out their stresses for both more laughs and more heartbreak. It can show us sometimes an entire relationship from beginning to end. In a lot of ways, this depiction of romance may mirror a more common, more contemporary experience of it too. According to Pew, the percentage of Americans who end up happily ever after is in steady decline. People haven't found the right partner, they aren't ready, or they don't feel financially able to commit. In the last 10 years, the number of adults living alone has increased to 42%, and the number of people who live with their partner but remain unmarried has increased as well, to 18 million people. That's more than twice the population of New York City. Maybe the saccharine sweetness of the classic filmic romantic comedy isn't palatable anymore. Especially if romance is no longer synonymous with a meet-cute which, after some difficulty, ends in bliss, but is a sort of 
ongoing adventure with ups, downs, failures, triumphs, and yeah, still some adorkability, probably. It's happening. This seems to line up with the televised expression of the genre, too. It may be that the genre has stayed the same in a lot of ways, even after it's moved to TV, because there really are some universalities about falling in love. But at least in that transition, from big to small screen, we're getting to see how more and more kinds of people do their falling. Perhaps audiences crave more complexity in their romantic storytelling, something that TV is more equipped to do. While we may still want romance and serendipity, we increasingly know that a relationship isn't just romance and serendipity. I was with some girl I don't even remember. Roberta. Right, Roberta. Happily Ever After is less than perfectly happy ever after. I'm Mike Rignetta. This has been Cinema Depictions romantic comedy.